The Aurora Borealis, aka the Northern Lights, is an elusive natural phenomenon that few here in Vancouver have ever been lucky enough to witness. I'm not saying that you will all of a sudden become one of them, however my goal with this video is to give you the tools that I use to see the Northern Lights here in Vancouver. So let's start with a little background before we get into the when and the how. The Aurora Borealis was discovered by Galileo back in the day and has been interpreted in many different ways. From a bridge to Asgard as a part of Norse mythology, all the way to the whispers of souls that have passed on. Thankfully, science has a good explanation as to what they are. There are two main players in this equation. We've got the sun and we've got the earth. Now the Earth is basically just a big spinning magnet that creates a gravitational cycle around the Earth. And the Sun is a giant ball of gas. So the Sun will have these massive explosions of helium and hydrogen called coronal mass ejections. These ejections release plasma from the Sun and shoot across the solar system. They ride what is called the solar wind and make their way over to Earth. This highly ionized plasma typically bounces off of the magnetic field around the Earth caused by our gravitational cycle. However, at the North and South Poles is the easiest entrance point for this plasma to interact with our atmosphere. The plasma collides with the oxygen and the nitrogen in our atmosphere, emitting the vibrant colors that we know in the Aurora Borealis. Oxygen at around 60 miles above the Earth causes the more commonly seen yellowish greens and nitrogen is responsible for the bluish purples most commonly seen further north. Additionally, if you are lucky enough to see the rarest red aurora that is also oxygen but all the way up at 120 miles above Earth's surface. So now that we have a better understanding of what exactly the aurora borealis is, we can start to plan accordingly. So the big two questions to ask ourselves is when and where. The when is actually quite simple. So we can start with the process of elimination. Aurora activity, it actually can happen 24 hours a day. However, it has to be dark to see them. So we can eliminate any daytime hours. During the summer, this means that there are only a few hours of nautical dark with optimal viewing darkness. Next is the weather. In Vancouver, as you probably know, it rains a lot. So we can eliminate any cloudy nights, which is a lot of them, and one of the other factors is the brightness of the full moon. This doesn't stop them from being seen, however they must be brighter for us to see them here, as they will compete with the moon's brightness in the sky. This is about half of the equation, so starting with a clear dark sky, we then need to wait for the lights to actually come out. However, the Aurora Borealis is notoriously difficult to predict. Thankfully, we have technology to aid us in this endeavor. There are a number of websites and apps that will notify you when there's a good chance of seeing the Aurora Borealis here in Vancouver. The first one that I recommend is the Aurora app. Super simple. Set up your location and it'll send you a notification on your phone when there's a high chance that you can see the Aurora near you. This app, you know, it seems to be the most convenient but also the least accurate in my experience. This is why I also have the aurorawatch.ca email notifications on. These will send you a yellow alert in advance and a red alert when it's go time. The most accurate app that I use most often though is called Space Weather Live. It'll also do the sending you notifications thing when there's a higher chance of auroral activity, as well as a lot of other really important information, including solar wind data, BZ values, and magnetometers. There's a lot to learn about interpreting the data, so I would recommend checking out Nightlight's films as he often does aurora courses to get a deep understanding of the data. There's a lot to unpack there, so. You should also just check out his amazing work because it's spectacular. Um, so when you get the notification on a clear dark night, that means it's go time. At this point, I would switch over to using softservenews.com for the most accurate data on current Aurora activity. 
Using their real-time forecasting map, you can estimate if it is just arriving in your area and how long it might last. This map is embedded from the NOAA, where you can also see how the aurora has been behaving over the past few days. And this brings us to the measurement of aurora activity, or a KP rating. This rating measures the solar wind intensity, which determines how far south the aurora will be visible. A KP rating of 1 to 4 will only be visible really far in the north. However, a KP rating of 4 to 6 should be visible on the horizon, all the way down here in Vancouver, and a KP 6 to 9 will be overhead and pretty bright above the North Shore Mountains. When I'm out waiting to see if the aurora will become more or less active, this is the page that I'm constantly refreshing. I will wait in the car or at home until it hits a 4 or a 5, and then we'll determine what location to go to. So to answer to when you can see the Northern Lights in Vancouver is on a clear dark night when the KP rating is above a 6. This brings us to the final variable, where to go. So we know that the Earth is round and the auroras typically happen 60 kilometers above the Earth's surface in the north above the Yukon. During a KP5 plus storm, the most important thing is to make sure we can see the horizon to the north. So the base of Cyprus and Seymour Mountains are both pretty bad spots to go as you can't see north. We also want the least amount of light pollution possible. So the best spots that I have found with minimum light pollution and a north view close to Vancouver are Burnaby Mountain, Porto Cove, Pit Lake, Pit Lake Road area, and Spanish Banks. These each have a clear north facing view with minimal-ish light pollution. But a KP7 storm will be much taller and visible through the light pollution, so that opens up our locations quite a bit. Some of the best locations to shoot from include Tower Beach at UBC, Spanish Banks, Kitsilano Beach, West Point Grey or Butis Ridge with a clear north view, Stanley Park, Queen Elizabeth, Horseshoe Bay, Porto Cove, Pitt Lake, Mission, Chilliwack, Harrison Lake, getting further out to Hope, there's a lot of great spots, climb any mountain and that'll do. Worst case scenario, on any really big storm, anywhere with a clear north facing view will do. I was even able to capture it from my 14th floor apartment in the middle of Olympic Village one year. And I've also seen others get photos from their penthouses and in Stanley Park. And that's everything that you need to know to see the Northern Lights in Vancouver, British Columbia. So please tag me on Instagram or message me on any platform with your photos if you're able to see them during the next big storm. I typically, I'm able to see them maybe once or twice per year and I really hope that you will get to too because they're really, really special. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you guys next time.